Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Show Mott. And I have some ranting to do, but in a positive way. Yeah, that's me. I'm the positive guy. You know, typically I'm that crazy. Uh, you guys think I'm kind of negative maybe at times. But that's what ranting is about. Just cross at me. Brother, I'm telling you right now, if you have, if you didn't watch the Indiana Fever, Seattle Storm, tank, Storm game today, you missed a turning of the page. We saw a different team today, even different from the, the team we saw against Phoenix on Friday. This was a different team, a different team. But before we jump in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring that bell so you get all the up-to-the-minute updates from Come On Now, the podcast, Rudy's Rant, Combat Corner, Come On CFL, and all of our other properties. Caitlin Clark broke the all-time rookie assist record today. She finished with 23 points, nine assists, and five rebounds. Shooting from the perimeter, not so great. She, you know, was short arming a lot of stuff, but she still finished nine of 19 because she was attacking the rim. She showed a floater today. If she gets that floater, oh boy, because she hit a couple of mid-range shots as well. It was it wasn't just drive or shoot from the, from deep. It was floater, mid-range. She was doing doing some work. She also probably had seven or eight missed layups by her teammates, so she finished with nine assists. She probably should have had at least 15. Um, but that's for another story for another day because they got a humongous win over Seattle. Seattle had beaten their ass three times. Jewel Lloyd had looked like a superstar every time she played them. Indiana wins 92-75, to a dominating, dominating fourth quarter, outscoring them 33-17. to Consider the fact that they scored 35 points in the first half and scored 33 in the fourth. Lexi Hull went fucking bananas. That is your job, Lexi Hull. Hit wide open shots. Today she did it. Eight of ten, six of seven from three, 22 points, a huge fourth quarter. I think she hit four of them in the fourth. Huge. Huge performance from Lexi Hull. Kelsey Mitchell, 27, 10 of 19 shooting, 5 of 8 from 3. Big time performance. She did miss a layup that would have given Caitlin Clark a 10th assist. They all did. I mean, everybody missed layups of the day. They, there was a point in the first half, really not actually, the, the first half of the third quarter was really bad where they still scored 24 points, still let go into the fourth, but they missed so many freaking layups. Second and third quarter, they missed a whole bunch of layups. Clark really should have had 15 assists. 15 assists would have been her number today. She finished with nine, no double-double. Christy Sides did not stat pad. She did not stick Clark back in the game with just over about a minute and a half to go after Seattle emptied their bench. She pulled everybody out. You're not going to have a 10th assist. It is what it is. We're here to win ball games. I appreciate that from Christy Sides. That much respect because that's what you're supposed to do. We're not here to stat pad. We're not here to make it fluffy looking. Okay. We don't do that. Aaliyah Boston, unsung hero today with nine points, 15 rebounds, and eight assists. She had a lot of assists on pocket passes that were for her to. I'd like to see Aaliyah Boston go to the basket more with these with these pocket pass roll, you know, screen rolls. Um, but she hit a lot of passes, you know, basically their hockey assist from Caitlin Clark, if it was a hockey game, because it was hitting Aaliyah Boss, and she's making a decision. Oh, you're open, boom, bucket. And, and she had a great game in seeing people that were open. Indiana's defense, though, they, only get, they held Seattle to 75 points. That's a huge, huge thing for the Indiana Fever, because defensively they typically struggle. And Jewel Lloyd in the first half was largely ineffective. Second half, she went off. I mean, she, she was starting to hit shots. Second half, she finished with 26 points. Um, but it wasn't like those games that she, she played previously against Indiana where she's shooting 57% from the field and 57% from 50-some odd percent from three. Today, she's nine of 22, two of six from three. So it wasn't the same type of game. Now, Ezzy Magbogor, my God, that girl is a rim protector for Seattle. She blocked – she had five blocks. I mean, she's blocking shots left and right. However, I think some of these some of these blocks come because these women are just going up way too slow with the ball. 
You know, you got to be ready to go up with the ball. Catch and go. You can't wait for her. She's a freaking long-ass girl who's going to block your shot, man. Overall, Indiana balled out today. Second half was very, very impressive. You know, especially when you're playing a team that's beaten your ass three times earlier in the season. Kind of like that New York Liberty game, but I think this one really turned a corner because in the fourth quarter, they blew them out of the building. They blew them out of the building. That's big, big. That's that's big, big, big for Indiana because every win they've had this year has been pretty much a close game. So, you know, when you when you combine all these things together, this is the best performance the Indiana, Indiana Fever have had all season. They didn't blow the lead. In fact, they were trailing much of the first half and got the lead late in the first half, had the lead at the half, which I thought was big for them. They went up, I think, by 10 or so in the in, in the second, in the third quarter. Seattle crept back in because they're not going to go away. But that fourth quarter with Lexi Hull and those threes that she hit, those were huge. Like that, that is that is what you need from Lexi Hull. That's her job. Like that's the thing. Like it's like it's like kickers in football. Your job is to make kicks. When you're when your job is to shoot the basketball and hit corner threes, that's literally what you should be working on every day when you're not playing. You you should be working on your shot from the corner. And it looks like she did because today she shot lights out. If she can be a fraction of that every game, not that, but a fraction of that. That means. Not 22, but give me 11, 12. You hit three threes in a game. She hit her career high, six. Her previous career high was three. Today she hit six. You give me three a game. You're you're scoring 10, 11, 12 points. Because she's always getting out. She's always getting open layup looks from Caitlin Clark on the break. You're averaging 12 a game. That is a massive thing for the Indiana Fever to, to be at that next level. Um. It did great, man. I it's it, it, I don't know why Christy Sides doesn't always push pace. First half, they didn't push pace again. It was weird. I, I want to give credit to Seattle's defense, but I just thought they didn't push pace. Again, stop not pushing pace. When they push pace, make or miss. It cannot be just on miss. Grip that damn ball from out of bounds and get it in and go. Get it in and go, go, go. When they go, 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 they are the t- – when Indiana is going, and I've watched every team play this year at least once. When Indiana is going on offense, they're the best offense in basketball, in, in WNBA basketball. They're the best offense in the WNBA when they're going, when they're pushing tempo. When they go into half court, they become pretty awful. When they're walking the ball down the floor, they become awful. But when they're going, they have the best offense in basketball. It's because their point guard's always looking up the court. She's Clark's always like, she's like this. Her eye, she sees the floor better than any player in the league. Better than any player in the league. So, end of the day, huge win. They're off for five days now, which is like another vacation for Clark to get more rest. Their next game is the 24th against the Minnesota Lynx. They are now, which is at Minnesota. That's going to be a tough, tough game. Nafisha Collier's back healthy. She's balling. She had 30 yesterday or whatever day it was the day. You know, you got um put the standings now behind the Phoenix plays Chicago tonight. That's a big game. And obviously for all three teams, because Chicago's a game behind Indiana now. If they lose their game and a half. If Phoenix loses, they're 14 and 14. They're only a game ahead of Indiana. So and Indiana's got that tiebreaker. So that's a huge, huge game across the board. We'll see how uh, Chicago does tonight after they lost. They got blown out by Phoenix in Chicago earlier this week or last, technically last week. Um, but yeah, we'll have, we'll be checking that game out as well later on. And we'll probably do a recap of that based on how that one goes. But big time win by the Indiana fever. It's hard to complain about a 17 point victory. Other than make your goddamn layups, man. Because that 17 point game should have been a 30 point game if you make your layups. That's why this league at times is just so difficult to stomach because you watch Miss Bunnies on nobody. Nobody's there and you're missing. There's no excuses for it. But anyhow, that's all I got today for Rudy's Rants. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now. <laughs>